Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osewusu Kovner. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We thank God for another opportunity like this to come at His feet, particularly in seasons, this Christmas seasons. But I want to remind you that the virus is still around, so please do take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Let's bow here for prayer. Father, the entrance of thy word giveth light. Bring illumination and understanding to us this day. May we receive the goodness of the Lord as prepared for us this season. We celebrate and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's get into the scriptures. Let's get to Micah chapter number 5. And verse number 2. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But thou Bethlehem, Epata, though, though thou be lower among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from the old, from everlasting. Amen. This was a prophecy which was fulfilled in the days of Herod, the king of Judah at that time, when the Romans were reigning. And then the wise men came to him and they inquired to find out where the Messiah, the Christ, would be born. And they told him, Bethlehem of Judah, Bethlehem of Judah. These were prophecies fulfilled. But this morning, I want us to see something about our God. Something about God. And then let's get into Isaiah chapter number 46, verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 6, 46, verse number 10. There's something about God. He said, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the thing that I had not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God is the almighty, the sovereign one who declares the end from the beginning. From day one, he can declare the end of the story before even the story will start. He declared where the Messiah will be born. The child was not even yet conceived. He knows it from day one. The Lamb of Judah, you'll be born there. You see, so when you consider who God is and what he will do. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord. Revelation chapter 1 verse number 8, he is the Alpha, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So when we are dealing with the Holy One of Israel, when we are dealing with the Most High God, He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He knows where He has begun and He knows where He's going to end. So He can declare an end of a, an event before it will start. This is my God. Hallelujah. Whatever he says will come to power because he's not man to lie. He is the most high God. And we believe and we trust him with our heart and we will live to see him in the land of the living, the goodness of our Lord among us. So one of his prophecies, which we are going to look carefully today, is about the birth of Christ. When you look at Isaiah chapter number 7 and then verse number 14, a powerful prophecy is it possible? Isaiah chapter number 7 and then verse number 14. He said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Which sign? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. How can a virgin conceive? It is only the Almighty who can work that miracle out. A virgin cannot conceive. Before, because before anyone will conceive in the natural, a man and a woman must meet. And then he will lose that virginity. He will no more be a virgin. But the scripture is saying, a virgin, this is a sign. The, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Please, I want us to critically look at this sign very important in scripture 
Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now listen, if a virgin can see, conceive, how can that person standing outside know? You can verify. There are more doubt hanging around this statement because you cannot, how do you know? Even if a woman tells you that I'm a virgin and I conceive, you have doubt because that is not normal, it's not natural. You see, so, but there is a message here. There were two people involved. It was Mary and who? Joseph. His spouse were all his fiancée, the man to marry him. These were the two people who can testify that this child is of all, of the Lord. And so God did something. He spoke to Mary and Mary questioned him. That, I like that question. Let's read the account of what happened. Luke chapter number one. Let's start from the verse number 26. Luke one, let's start from 26. Very interesting. Mm. And in the same month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Ga Galilee, named Nazareth, mm -hmm. to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the, and the virgin's name was Mary. Uh -huh. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women. And when she saw, when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation is, is this should be? And the angel said unto her, Fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mm -hmm. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Okay? And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Mm -hmm. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now Mary now comes in with the verse 34. And it's very critical, he, she asked that question. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Hallelujah. Then the angel went on, 35. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the higher shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing who shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. God himself shall give thee a sign. But this type of sign is not verifiable. When you are a third party, when you stand outside, it's difficult to believe. How do I accept that a virgin is conceived when it is not possible in the natural? Okay? But then, the scripture is telling us, God said, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing who shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That means the Holy Ghost shall come upon him, and God, by his almighty power, will place a seed in the womb of Mary. And he was going to conceive. And he will call him Jesus. And that son will be the son of God. When you read about this and you attend party, you have many questions. And there's every reason to doubt it. Hallelujah. It's not rational. It's, you, you can conceive it in the nature. You can grasp it. But then, that is the key. That is it. Because even Mary has to believe to conceive. The key and the mystery of the kingdom of God is this. God is a sovereign one. 
He can do what he wants to do at all times. He has no limit to his power. But then, when he wants to convey a message or if he wants to do anything for humanity, it comes in this form. He will reveal it and those who are involved must receive it by faith. This is the key to the Christian faith. If you can believe it, nothing is impossible. Even Mary conceiving Jesus Christ, when the angel came to him, she had to believe. When you get to verse number 45, look at what he says. Luke 1, 45. And blessed is she that believe it. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her of the Lord. Listen, not even Mary, not even Mary. She got to believe because, listen, God was about something. He is bringing his kingdom into manifestation and there are principles of a king being revealed and it's being unfolded. Everyone who will believe, everyone who will believe will receive from him. Everyone who will believe will receive understanding. Everyone who will believe will be ushered into the kingdom. Brother, sister, hear me. We talk about the, the birth of Christ. But I'm coming up to show you from the scriptures. God is giving us a revelation that the mystery of a kingdom is that you got to believe to enter. You got to believe to receive. You got to believe to any aspect of Christian faith. Now, let's get into the scripture. When you come to John 3, and chapter, chapter 3, and let's get to verse number 3. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, John 3:3, 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, 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 I say unto thee, as said a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Brother, from day one, when even Christ uh, was being placed into the womb of that virgin, it got to be on one principle. Mary got to believe. The kingdom operate on this principle of faith. Those who believe will have access into God's grace. And God placed us in her womb. And she believed. And that was a prophecy of Elizabeth. Blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things whom the Lord has spoken to you. If only you believe all things are possible. I am going to make this statement. <laughs> Listen carefully. You are a believer, you have come into the faith. But this is a mystery of a kingdom. The key is this. You can be a Christian, but you will not enjoy other aspects of Christian faith. You can be a Christian, you may not be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be a Christian, you will not receive any healing miracle and still be in poverty. Why? But Jesus paid a price for our poverty. He pays a price for our sin. You have come into the faith, but you need to believe to enter into any aspect of the Christian faith. Christian experience will only come your way if only you can believe. So I want you to grasp it. Even when we talk about the birth of Christ, giving God himself, placing the womb into the womb of Mary, the seed that Christ will be born. It comes with all its own principle of a kingdom. The principle revealed is simply this. Anything concerning God and his kingdom must be done by faith. And those who will believe, they are those who will come into experience. They will test of the goodness of the law and they'll begin to know who God is and there shall be a manifestation of God's grace and mercy toward them. Hallelujah. Brethren, listen. I'm excited this morning to be with you. And I want to encourage you. Listen. When you think about a virgin birth, we see a wonderful miracle taking place. We see the sovereign God working things and which no human being can do. A virgin conceiving. And where you cannot verify it. <laughs> Science cannot prove it. The only way to understand and embrace this thing is by faith. So the, to the wise, it's foolishness. Because he cannot reason it out. 
it is beyond them but to the believer when you believe you now are ushered into the kingdom of God John said Jesus said unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of God and the verse 5 says you cannot enter into the kingdom of God you see so listen the truth is this that the mystery about the kingdom came with the package day one when the conception takes place it is not rational you cannot reason it out you must embrace it by faith that is the principle in the kingdom of God all those who want to take of the goodness of the law must believe in Jesus Christ and his kingdom and this is why the scripture say Jesus make a declaration when we were young he said I am the way the truth and the light no man cometh to the father but by me John 14 verse 6 but you see, listen the interesting thing is this when you look at this scripture John 14 6 we what well, we thought about oh, when you come to Christ you are born again and you are a child of God and when you die you make heaven yes that's the first meaning now for a good Christian, a young Christian, but now listen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way into all truth God given to man. He is the way into any provision of God. Listen, by him, one will believe there shall be a manifestation of God's glory. He is a way into God's miracles. He is a way unto God's spirit. He is a way unto God's healing power. He is a way unto God's divine provision. He is a way unto every supply of every need. He is Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. All power belongs to him. Now listen. So when we talk about the birth of Christ, we normally embrace this story, very nice, this miracle that took place. This wonderful woman called Mary, who conceived that he's a virgin chosen of God to place a seed in her womb. And we love that story. But the principle and the concept of the kingdom revealed is what I'm conveying to you today. As we think about the birth of Christ, let us see that he is coming as a king, but he has his principle. The principle is this, anyone who believes now receive grace and manifestations of his mercy and power that is a principle of a kingdom of god and if you don't believe you can have it if you don't believe you will be cut off he said i am the way the truth and the light yeah he is the way the truth and the life no man will come to the father by me he is a way unto god he is the way unto any grace you can imagine. He is the way unto God's provision. He is the one who wants to supply every need in our daily work with him here on earth. He is the way, the one who is ready to help us, who will stand by us. He is a mighty one, go along with us. He is Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Whom should I be afraid? The Lord will stand with us and he will help us. He had made all these things, but how can this be? Mary had that question and I love it. How shall this be? Brother, if you have no understanding about the things and the leadings of God and all that is working in your life, please humble yourself and seek after him. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you have for me? Lord, as you humble yourself in that way, desiring to know, without doubt. Uh -uh. Because listen, doubt, unbelief will cut you out of the grace of God. Faith is the access key. Romans chapter 5 and then the verse number 2. The other time we shared it here. Romans 5, 2. Uh-huh. Romans 5 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Listen. <laughs> by him we have what? 
access by faith. So faith is an access key. Mary got conceived because when he heard the word, she believed that the truth. When you hear the word of a Lord for your life, only believe and all things are possible to him that believe it. If you have no doubting in your heart, but believe the promise of God, then the, what follows is that there will be the manifestation of God's grace because you have the access key into God's grace and mercy and God's providence. God will supply the need. Don't worry, don't trouble yourself about many cares in this life. Don't worry yourself. The truth is this, what is required of us is that when we hear his word, we can believe. But some of our things, when they come to us, it's not rational, it's not reasonable. You can't understand why. That is the scriptures. The thing God will declare to you, some of them are not rational. Some of them are well known. <laughs> that is, the wise person, the man with full of senses, who can reason things out? Because how do you tell me that a virgin will conceive? It's not normal in the natural. So if only I'm raising in the natural, when they conceive, how do they know? Do they have their DNA? How do they test that? You see? So reason and logic in this natural environment cannot embrace this. Put it aside. But let's go in there and see that this is the doing of the Lord, the creator of the heavens and earth. He had declared that a virgin shall conceive, and he had followed it up, come true to Mary, and then gave him that seed. And now he went in there and went to the husband. And the angel spoke to the husband and said, Mary, your wife to be, is conceived of a child, but it is of a Holy Spirit. And Joseph embraced it, gave her a covering. You see, so nobody knew it and nobody can verify it who even doubt it but they walked together as husband and wife but that seed in that womb was not of joseph hallelujah but god had worked it out and listen when you read the scripture the mystery of it is that who can testify or who can reveal it but the bible said when you read luke chapter number two and then verse 19 he said mary kept all these things in her heart and pondered over it mary will not speak hear me somebody there are time to speak there are time not to speak hold on hold on hold on or you cause you may cause you may abort some of the visions and the dream god have given for your life don't you speak some of us we speak out Quickly about many things. Hallelujah. And it, great, it, it causes great problems and challenges for us. But Mary will keep it in her heart. She was so faithful. When you look at Luke 2 19, said he kept all these things in her heart. She kept it in her heart. When you got to 51, he said he also kept it. All that happened when they brought Jesus to the, to the temple and he was teaching at the age of 12. He was now, he met with, with these Pharisees and he, he was teaching. And for three days, the mother and Joseph and Mary thought he was in their company because there were many people moving to, along. So he thought he was along. But as they went along for three days, they discovered he was not among them. So they have to come back to Jerusalem. And they saw Jesus at the temple. And when he asked, he said, I'm about my... I'm about my father's business. What can Mary do? She kept quiet. She knew the, who this special child is. Hallelujah. Now let's move on. Why will God spend time to work all these things out? There must be a reason. The reason is that all have sinned. That is an indictment on all humanity. There is none righteous. No, not one. There's nobody who can appear in this scene who is a seed or descendant of Adam who will be right or a perfect person. But God needed a perfect person who will offer himself for humanity as a sacrifice for our redemption. And so he's working these things out. And the reason is that he needs somebody who will come here. He is not a seed of Adam. And he will live among us without sin. Hallelujah. 
and that person must be found and that person was Christ hallelujah God by his own miraculous way preserved Christ a virgin birth now he came into this life and the Bible said he was without sin Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse 15 Hebrews 4 15 he was without sin all, all the others have sinned but he was without sin for we we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin this is jesus christ without sin god actually prepared him and brought him into the scene to be that redeemer that savior who will give his blood as a ransom for the sins of the world but he should be a perfect man without sin hallelujah because one sinner cannot die for another sinner but you need a righteous one to die for sinner hallelujah and so he came in there that is how god had to preserve and then have find a way in bringing christ to the world amen okay when you read peter first peter chapter number two mm -hmm. and verse number 22 who did no sin neither was God found in his mouth I wanted to establish this because God had to work all these things a virgin should give birth he should not be a seed of Adam he should not become a descendant of Adam no but he brought Jesus here and the only reason is that he need a perfect one who will pay the price for the redemption of the sins of the whole world amen and so god worked these things out and so when we talk about christmas it is a sovereign work of god manifesting grace unto humanity but by a divine order according to the purposes of god he established a way to bring him and he should come by a divine conception Mary should conceive, but she should be a virgin. He knew no man. Then she came in there, placed the womb, and then, so we have, we have learned one, the principle. The principle is that even Mary conceived Jesus by faith. When she heard the word, she believed and conceived. So that is the key to the kingdom. And now, we also understand here, the reason why God was working all these things out, he needed a perfect person. Somebody who, who's blind. And the, by the mouth of two witnesses, every word shall be established. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Uh-uh, you're not here. I'm saying by what? The mouth of who? Two witnesses. So we see Peter saying, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. And we also see Paul saying that, yet without sin. Hallelujah. So we have got our two witnesses. So we establish that Christ was without sin, according to the, to, according to the scriptures. But these two great pillars of the faith, Peter and who? Paul, testifying that Christ was a perfect man. And God chose him as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world and this is why john will tell you behold the lamp of god who take off away the sins of the world and you will point to christ he is a perfect lamb peter is saying that lamb is sinless perfect paul is saying he is without sin so they agree and now john is saying behold the lamb that take away the sins of the world so we see that perfect one coming into this life by a miraculous way i want you to believe in this miracle hallelujah when you follow this story there are many many lessons in there god made sure there was enough provision for joseph and mary because he needed to protect this child at the birth god had declared by prophecy he sent them to announce it in the palace and now he moved the child, he moved her from the land of Judah into Egypt. Hey, but how are they going to survive? They came with gold ornaments. 
make a presentation to him at the best. So they have some gold. Ah, uh, I'm here to tell you something. God will knows how to preserve you and provide for your basic needs. Cease from your worry. Trust him. All that is required that we will trust him with all our heart. He will order ourselves in the things ordained and prepared for our life. Don't be afraid. There was a divine provision to take them to Egypt and back. They have the gold. So when Jesus was in ministry and he said, the son of man have no place to lay his heart. Then I asked this question, but where is your gold? So go and ask Mary. <laughs> the use is on the trip. Why? God make a divine provision for them. I want you to know that there will be a divine provision and divine supply. God will cause you to receive abundance of grace. And you have divine provision. And also hear that God is always one step ahead of your enemies. Don't worry yourself. They will never meet Jesus at Bethlehem. He is gone to Egypt. God knew that they were coming after him. So he advised them, get up, take the child from here and go into Egypt. And God will guide them right into Egypt. And at a time when Herod died, they came back to Nazareth. You see, all these things are prophecies being fulfilled. But you see that big hand in it. May God's big hand be in your life. May he begin to direct and help you. May he begin to assist your life like he did in the life of Jesus Christ. He is your God. Today I want you to commit your life to Jesus Christ. I want you to commit your life to this mighty God who can work any miracle. All that is you need to believe the things you have heard from the scripture, the things that have been made known to you. If only you can believe, all things are possible. Please be on your feet and shall we pray. And I believe God, grace and mercy shall be upon thee. His mercy and spirit shall be upon you and you will never be the same. The Lord is with us. He is a wonderful God. He is able to keep and to preserve that which are committed to him. He is able to direct and lead our life. I know and I believe that he is on your side. And he wants to help you. He wants to speak into your life. His spirit and grace is being released upon you. And you will go out there for exploit. You are marked for victory. God's provision and supply will cause you to uh, receive all the needs in your life. And God's blessing shall be your portion. I want us to pray. Hear me. Just raise your hand and shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for these ones, Lord. Oh, God. And those who are watching and those who are seeing these things, may your grace and mercy that accompany the birth of Jesus Christ be imparted into their life, even as they believe. By watching this gospel, may your spirit transfer power and life into them. May the joy of Christmas be their portion. May they celebrate this season with faith in the name of the Lord. May the hand of God be released over your life. And may God's mercy be your portion. May God provide and keep you. May he present and order yourself. May you be one step ahead of your enemy. Overcome every challenge by a divine order. May the angels of God keep watch over you and preserve your life. May God's mercy be upon you. Father, I thank you for the brethren, for they have believed your word. Almighty God, surround them and keep and preserve them. We honor you. Now listen, those who listen and those who watching, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to make a commitment. Pray, please pray with me. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, from the depths of my heart, I surrender to you this day. When I think of Christmas, I think of your mercy toward me. I embrace you into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Let the joy of Christmas be my portion. I give you praise, Lord. Lord, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me by your blood. I proclaim, Jesus, that you died and rose again. And you are seated at the right hand of God forever and ever. I praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
In Jesus' name, Amen. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May the joy of Christmas be experienced in your life. May God give you revelations of who he is. And by faith, embrace the mercies and the blessings of Christmas. And may God grace lead and guide you. And by faith, access into any grace in Christ. And let the joy of the Lord be your portion. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. For having time with the General Overseer, you can follow Reverend Wusu Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you. Every eye will see the King, the King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will